Hi this is lesson for creating and managing tables using DDL statements. At the end of this lesson you should be able to Categorize the main database objects Review the table structure List the data types that are available for columns Create a simple table Explain how constraints are created at the time of table creation Describe how schema objects work The Oracle database can contain multiple data structures. Each structure should be outlined in the database design so that it can be created during the build stage of database development. Table, is the basic unit of storage and composed of rows. View, is the subset of data from one or more tables. Sequence, generates numeric values. Index, improves the performance of some queries. Synonym, gives alternative name to an object. You name database tables and columns according to the standard rules for naming any Oracle database object. Table names and column names must begin with a letter and be 130 characters long. Names must contain only the characters AZ, AZ, 09, underscore, dollar, and number, legal characters, but their use is discouraged. Names must not duplicate the name of another object owned by the same Oracle server user. Names must not be an Oracle server reserved word. You create tables to store data by executing the SQL create table statement. This statement is one of the DDL statements that are a subset of the SQL statements used to create, modify, or remove Oracle database structures. These statements have an immediate effect on the database and they also record information in the data dictionary. To create a table, a user must have the create table privilege and a storage area in which to create objects. The database administrator DBA, uses data control language, DCL, statements to grant privileges to users. A schema is a collection of logical structures of data or schema objects. A schema is owned by a database user and has the same name as that user. Each user owns a single schema. Schema objects can be created and manipulated with SQL and include tables, views, synonyms. Sequences, stored procedures, indexes, clusters, and database links. If a table does not belong to the user, the owner's name must be prefixed to the table. For example, if there are schemas named Usera and Userb, and both have an employee's table, then if Usera wants to access the employee's table that belongs to Userb, Usera must prefix the table name with the schema name for Eximal. Select asterisk from userb.employees. When you define a table, you can specify that a column should be given a default value by using the default option. This option prevents null values from entering the columns when a row is inserted without a value for the column. The default value can be a literal, an expression, or a SQL function, such as sysdate or user but the value cannot be the name of another column or a pseudo-column, such as next vol or curval. The default expression must match the data type of the column. The example in the slide creates the department table with four columns, depno, dname, loc, and create underscore date. The create underscore date column has a default value. If a value is not provided for an insert statement, the system date is automatically inserted. To confirm that the table was created, run the describe command. When you identify a column for a table, you need to provide a data type for the column. There are several data types available as shown in the slide.
you can use several date-time data types as shown in the slide, these date-time data types are available with Oracle 9i and later releases. The Oracle server uses constraints to prevent invalid data entry into tables. You can use constraints to do the following, enforce rules on the data in a table whenever a row is inserted, updated, or deleted from that table. The constraint must be satisfied for the operation to succeed. Prevent the deletion of a table if there are dependencies from other tables. Provide rules for Oracle tools, such as Oracle Developer. The following constraint types are valid. Not null specifies that the column cannot contain a null value. Unique specifies a column or combination of columns whose values must be unique for all rows in the table. Primary key uniquely identifies each row of the table. Foreign key establishes and enforces a referential integrity between the column and a column of the referenced table such that values in one table match values in another table. Check specifies a condition that must be true. All constraints are stored in the data dictionary. Constraints are easy to reference if you give them a meaningful name. Constraint names must follow the standard object naming rules, except that the name cannot be the same as another object owned by the same user. If you do not name your constraint, the Oracle server generates a name with the format sys underscore cn, where n is an integer so that the constraint name is unique. Constraints can be defined at the time of table creation or after the creation of the table. You can Define a constraint at the column or table level. Functionally, a table level constraint is the same as a column level constraint. The slide gives the syntax for defining constraints when creating a table. You can create constraints at either the column level or table level. Constraints defined at the column level are included when the column is defined. Table level constraints are defined at the end of the table definition and must refer to the column or columns on which the constraint pertains in a set of parentheses. It is mainly the syntax that differentiates the two, otherwise, functionally, a column level constraint is the same as a table level constraint. Constraints are usually created at the same time as the table. Constraints can be added to a table after its creation and also be temporarily disabled. Both examples in the slide create a primary key constraint on the employee underscore ID column of the employees table. 1. The first example uses the column level syntax to define the constraint. 2. The second example uses the table level syntax to define the constraint. The not null constraint ensures that the column contains no null values. Columns without the not null constraint can contain null values by default. Not null constraints must be defined at the column level. In the employees table, the employee underscore ID column inherits a not null constraint as it is defined as a primary key. Otherwise, the last underscore name, email, hire underscore date, and job underscore ID columns have the not null constraint enforced on them. The not null constraint ensures that the column contains no null values. Columns without the not null constraint can contain null values by default. Not null constraints must be defined at the column level. In the employees table, the employee underscore ID column inherits a not null constraint as it is defined as a primary key. Otherwise, the last underscore name, email, hire underscore date, and job underscore ID columns have the not null constraint enforced on them. Unique constraints can be defined at the column level or table level. You define the constraint at the table level when you want to create a composite unique key. A composite key is defined when there is not a single attribute that can uniquely identify a row. In that case, you can have a unique key that is composed of two or more columns, the combined value of which is always unique and can Identify rows. The example in the slide applies the unique constraint to the email column of the employees. Table. The name of the constraint is emp underscore email underscore uk.
A primary key constraint creates a primary key for the table. Only one primary key can be created for each table. The primary key constraint is a column or a set of columns that uniquely identifies each row in a table. This constraint enforces the uniqueness of the column or column combination and ensures that no column that is part of the primary key can contain a null value. The foreign key, or referential integrity, constraint designates a column or a combination of columns as a foreign key and establishes a relationship with a primary key or a unique key in the same table or a different table. In the example in the slide, department underscore ID has been defined as the foreign key in the employee's table, dependent or child table, it references the department underscore ID column of the department's table, the referenced or parent table. Foreign key constraints can be defined at the column or table constraint level. A composite foreign key must be created by using the table level definition. The example in the slide defines a foreign key constraint on the department underscore ID column of the employee's table, using table level syntax. The name of the constraint is emp underscore department underscore fk. The foreign key is defined in the child table and the table containing the referenced column is the parent table. The foreign key is defined using a combination of the following keywords, foreign key is used to define the column in the child table at the table constraint level. References identifies the table and the column in the parent table. On delete cascade indicates that when a row in the parent table is deleted, the dependent rows in the child table are also deleted. On delete set null indicates that when a row in the parent table is deleted, the foreign key values are set to null. The default behavior is called the restrict rule, which disallows the update or deletion of referenced data. Without the on delete cascade or the on delete set null options, the row in the parent table cannot be deleted if it is referenced in the child table. The check constraint defines a condition that each row must satisfy. The condition can use the same constructs as the query conditions, with the following exceptions, references to the curval, next vol, level, and row number pseudocolumns calls to sysdate, UID, user, and user and functions queries that refer to other values in other rows a single column can have multiple check constraints that refer to the column in its definition. There is no limit to the number of check constraints that you can define on a column. The example in the slide shows the statement that is used to create the employee's table in the HR schema. When you have constraints in place on columns, an error is returned if you try to violate the constraint rule. For example, if you try to update a record with a value that is tied to an integrity constraint, an error is returned. In the example in the slide, Department 55 does not exist in the parent table, departments, and so you receive the parent key not found, violation or a 02291. If you attempt to delete a record with a value that is tied to an integrity constraint, an error is returned. The example in the slide tries to delete Department 60 from the department's table but it results in an error because that department number is used as a foreign key in the employee's table. If the parent record that you attempt to delete has child records, then you receive the child record found violation or a 02292. A second method for creating a table is to apply the as subquery clause, which both creates the table and inserts rows returned from the subquery. The table is created with the specified column names, and the rows retrieved by the SELECT statement are inserted into the table. The column definition can contain only the column name and default value. If column specifications are given, the number of columns must equal the number of columns in the subquery SELECT list. If no column specifications are given, the column names of the table are the same as the column names in the subquery. The example in the slide creates a table named DEPT80, which contains details of all the employees working in Department 80. Notice that the data for the DEPT80 table comes from the employees table. You can verify the existence of a database table and check the column definitions by using the describe command. However, be sure to provide a column alias when selecting an expression. The expression salary asterisk 12 is given the alias insole. 
you can use the alter table statement to add a new column. Modify an existing column definition. Define a default value for the new column. Drop a column. Rename a column. Change table to read only status. Use the alter table syntax to put a table into the read-only mode as shown in the slide. By doing this, it can prevent DDL or DML changes during table maintenance. You can also change it back into read or write mode as shown in the slide. The slide shows an example of using alter table command to add column to a table. The slide shows the syntax of using alter table command to modify column. The slide shows the syntax of using alter table command to physically and logically drop column. The drop table statement moves a table to the recycle bin or removes the table and all its data from the database entirely. Unless you specify the purge clause, the drop table statement does not result in space being released back to the table space for use by other objects, and the space continues to count towards the user's space quota. Dropping a table invalidates the dependent objects and removes object privileges on the table. In this lesson, you should have learned how to use the create table statement to create a table and include constraints. Categorize the main database objects. Review the table structure. List the data types that are available for columns. Create a simple table. Explain how constraints are created at the time of table creation. Describe how schema objects work.